Each September, half a million children begin the most important year of school so far. Year seven. CBBC have rigged this secondary school with loads of cameras. So you can see exactly what happens as they make new friends and get into trouble. If you wish to find out how strict I can be, then break the rules I set down. I'm not spotting makeup there, am I? But what they learn here will stay with them forever. Hello there, I'm Mr Thorburn and I'm a science teacher here. If you've ever wondered what secondary school is like, here's your chance to find out. This is our school. How can you do that? This time, we meet Ewan. Ewan loves his freedom. When you're out motorbiking, you, you trust you when you're biking you, and just forget about anything. It just wipes your mind. But at primary school, he sometimes struggled to obey the rules. And when he got told off, he'd get angry and walk out of school. Pram school is just like no fun at all. Everyone gets angry, no one cannot get angry. I used to like feel like I wanted to get out. I felt I was like trapped. He's hoping secondary school will be different. I'm really excited to go to high school. Because, like, I used to be naughty, but now, like, I'm having a fresh start. But just two weeks into term, and he's already testing the teachers. Why, where do you think you're going? Sometimes, like, I can get, like, really frustrated and walk out. When I say we do not talk, what don't we do? Don't talk. Don't talk. You are sorry, aren't you? Yeah. I don't want to see you back up here again. No, I don't. OK? I can get in trouble, like, once in a while, but, like, not all the time. Can Ewan make the most of his fresh start? Over 600 students travel by bus to our school every day. Each student will make almost 2,000 trips on the bus to and from school before they're 16. That's a lot of journeys. For many, it can be about having fun with mates, while for others, it's a chance to mess about without teachers around to stop them. Getting on the bus on the morning, with no teachers on the bus, and then getting on that bus on the way home, that is, I think, more difficult for a Year 7 than anything else that they do. In some cases, the Year 7s are going to have to be physically sat with other Year groups, and there's an inevitable bit of sort of one-upmanship that takes place on buses. Getting the bus is really nice because you have all your friends there, and all you have to do is like go to the bus stop on time, and then you get to school. You don't have to worry about anything else. I have missed the bus twice now. We always sit near the back and uh, one time the worst thing that happened is that we were getting foam biscuits at. And then when you got off the bus you just thought, oh god, look at the mess in the bus. It's cooler to sit at the back um, of the bus because that's where all the cool people sit. There's like uh, nine and tens, they should you yeah, oh my god, they're absolutely so naughty. People tend to throw things, like not all the time, but I have been hit by a few flying projectiles. I mean, I got hit on the head by a Pringles box the other day. Noisy, cold, boring. I'm boring, yeah. Sometimes it could be good fun on the bus because, and like sometimes, like it's fun because you sit next to your friends and stuff. Noisy, cramped, and smelly. There's been an incident on the bus, and this morning, everyone seems to be talking about who's involved. Two Year 8s and Year 7 student Ewan. Why, what did he do? What did he do? He set his shoes on fire on the bus. Did he? 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm a pussy well, set a shoe on fire with the lighter. Why? I don't you know. Are. This guy called Ewan in year seven, um, on the bus, on the bus, you got a lighter and set his shoe on fire. Being a naughty, naughty boy. Yeah, you did. Like, I knew I was going to get in trouble for it. I just have a laugh with my mates. Ewan is in English. You saw Leo take the treasure chest. Ewan saw him. Year 7 manager Mr Livesey has spent all morning investigating the bus incident, trying to track down the culprits. And bringing you in. He's involved in this incident with um, lighters and deodorants and stuff. Mm, no. So, um, Lucy's got statements from some of the kids that don't right. be named. They've been um, flamethrowing and then lighting, spraying the feet. Yeah. And then lighting the feet so they can stamp it out. So... OK. I'm going to bring him in. Looks like Ewan is going to be pulled out of class. First impressions of Ewan when I met him was that he was going to be a bit of a challenge, a bit outgoing, had a bit of spark about him, but was someone who I was going to have to keep a close eye on to try and keep on the straight and narrow. Yes, Ewan? Because pirates might have like, written it down somewhere and people from our town might have found it. Somebody might have written it down and somebody else has found it. <sighs> Sorry, sir, can I take Ewan, please? OK, Ewan. Bring all your stuff, thank you. No problem, sir. OK? I'll write those down for you, OK? I'll write them down. Ewan's in big trouble. Playing with fire on a bus is going to mean serious punishment for anyone involved. Did you have a deodorant? I had a deodorant. Did a lighter? I, had, I haven't got a lighter. No, I'm not saying you've got one now. You may have. I don't know. No, I don't have one. I'm being told from a number of students on the bus that you had a lighter. No. We were on the bus and my mates were, like, lighting aerosols and setting their shoes on fire. And then they asked me to let me, let me, like, set my shoe on fire, so I let them set it on fire once. It felt good, but it was bad as well. Cos, like, it could have, like, spread it up to your leg and, like, set you on fire, but, like, it didn't. I think Ewan wasn't the ringleader. I think he was obviously misled by older students, but I think he realises what he did was wrong, and I think it's trying to get through to Ewan that we are giving him a fresh start, we're not holding anything over him from what's gone in his primary school. It's so serious that Head of yeah. Behaviour, Mr Majuri, has been called. Right. OK, can you sit up straight, Ewan? Yeah. Right, you know what this is about, don't you? Yeah. You could have done some real damage here to yourself and to the other students you were messing around with. This could have gone horribly wrong. And we can't allow this to go without being punished. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give you, and this is not a light punishment, we're going to isolate you for at least three days. Do you know what isolation means? Yeah. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. What does it mean? Like where you can't go to classes. Yeah. You'll be kept out of classes, but you'll be isolated. You'll be in no contact with any of your friends, and you'll be worked. So this is no holiday, OK? Because we're not going to allow this to happen again. Right? OK? Yeah. Right. Thank you. Just come with me. We thought about excluding him, but decided because of the Year 7 situation and what had gone on with him, we, we wanted to do the best by him and try and keep him in school to, to get him back focused on what was going on. So we went for the three days in isolation, which is a big punishment for a Year 7. And the incident on the bus gets everyone talking. He set fire to his shoe, um, no, someone, no someone, someone else's shoe, the chair and uh, this girl's hair, and then apparently he set fire to his own shoe. Yeah, that's not actually what happened, but it shows you how gossip spreads. As well as three days in isolation, Ewan won't be allowed out with his friends at break or to have his mobile. Plus, he's been banned from the school bus for half a term. Hi, it's Mr Livesey at Conyers. Hi, yeah, I just want to fill you up to speed on what's, what I've found out today. Mr Livesey calls Ewan's mum to let her know what's happened. He needs to knuckle down and sort himself out, otherwise his time at Conyers may not last very long. OK, thanks, Mrs Kirk. Cheers. Bye now.
isolation is like when you get put in a room by yourself and look at the wall and do your work. It's when like, you have to sit in like, a room. In a room by yourself. With boxes, like kind of like a box thing. And like you sit there and like you do work. I, I haven't been in isolation, just so you know. And yeah, you're not allowed to speak. You've got to do all the work. But you give no one, it's just in a quiet room. Yeah, it's not it's not it's really bad. You gotta sit in a cubicle for six and a half hours. Yeah, how long have you stayed for then? Well, six and a half hours. Six and a half hours? So a full day. <laughs> but then you gotta like deal with it, you've done something bad and that's life. That's the life. It's the start of Ewan's three days in isolation, which means no mobile, no talking, and no seeing mates. When the bell goes, I'll meet somewhere. Yeah, I've got to go to isolation. Year 7 manager, Mr Livesey, will be watching over Ewan the whole time. Will Ewan knuckle down? Jack, where's students apart from here? Alright, Today, you get work, you sit in the booth, you do not turn around, you stay focused, you get your lunch at a separate time. Do you understand? Yeah. With me. OK, Ewan, into that booth there, please. Hang your cot in the back of the chair. Put your bag down. Thank you. Right, your work will get sent up during the day. You've got a maths test. So there we are. OK? Yeah. Thank you. I deserve isolation because I set my shoe on fire when I shouldn't have. But then you get lonely. His mum has come in to chat about what actually happened on the bus. Ewan's only been in isolation for less than two hours, but he's finding it too tough to handle. He's got three days to do. Now he's threatening to walk out, just like he did at primary school when things got too much. So his mum tries to calm him down. You're not in primary now, son, you're in seniors. Yeah, I'm going home. You're not going home. Yeah. Right, you and... Do you want to be excluded from school? Yeah. Why? Because I don't want to stay in. Just sit in a room. But you know that's your punishment for what you've done. Yeah, but you go and sit in there then. But hang on, I haven't done anything wrong. Yeah, but you try and go and sit in there for a day then. I just want to go home, Liam. You're not going home, son, right? You're not going home, babe. Yeah. Well, I'm going home. Why won't you go back in isolation? Because I'm missing you. You're not going to drop me off. I'll get the train home. You know you've done something wrong, don't you? Eh? Yes, sir. Right, so you know you have to think of the punishment. I'm not doing that for Mum, right, I'm not staying in school, all right? You're not coming home. Well, tell me why you're not staying in school. Because I don't like it. You're not going home, like. No. Oh, God. Ewan, just wait for me a second. And talk to me and me on down there, yeah? No. All right. Things just go around and around your head, so it gets you angry and angrier. So, like, then... If you get you really angry, you grab your bags and walk out. Ewan, come here, please. Oh, stop. Well, stop there, then. Stop there. I was definitely surprised that Ewan walked out. Um, it's the first time I've seen a Year 7 in that early stage um, have the nerve to do that, so I was quite surprised and quite shocked. Just stop. Right, can you and I just have a little chat now? No. Right, just hear me out. What I don't understand is... This morning, you came in and you were prepared to do isolation, weren't you? Yeah, but my mum said I can go on, but now she's saying not. Right, listen to me, listen to me. Listen, listen. Look at me, son. If you go home, you're still going to have to do three days of isolation, aren't you? Does that make sense? And if you don't do it, it ends up in an exclusion which goes on your record. This is, this is really silly. You're freezing out of the hour. Come on. 
Mr Livesey persuades Ewan to go back to school, but he's still refusing to go into isolation. I was thinking, like, shall I just run or shall I listen to them, shall I not? It's a horrible feeling cos things are going mound your head and, like, you don't know what to do. Yeah, like, I feel like I'm locked in a metal cage. Let's make the right decisions. Ewan's made a decision. He's leaving. He heads to the nearby train station. Head teacher Mrs Spellman and Mr Livesey are right behind him to try and convince him to come back. He's, um, I mean, the more you get closer, the more he gets agitated. He's in the sheltered in this uh, side here. Yeah. and you've got one here. I just know your mum, she's just hoping that you make the right choice. You did the first hour and a bit of isolation brilliantly. I'm doing it. It's your decision. You know your own mind. They've spent almost an hour trying to persuade Ewan to go back to school. Go for some lunch. I'm starving, you know, I'm freezing. Yeah, but he was in the jump man, he was just in the chair. Are you pleased you've done that? Huh? Good man. Come on, let's get in. The train come, and then I stepped onto it then. I stepped back off it to go back to school. Because I thought about my mum, she wouldn't want me to, and I knew I was going to get into more trouble. Good decision, Ewan. And Mr Livesey finds out that they've got something in common. Who do you think? Only one team is apart round here. The old yeah, they're useless like, but. <laughs> oh, you are my borrower. My only borrower. You make me happy. When skies are grey, you'll never notice how much I love you. Don't ever take my borrower away. Not a few words, that Quality. and completes his three days in isolation. The school hopes that if Ewan gets involved in sport, it might channel his energy into something positive. This lunchtime, he's trying out for the rugby team. All the way down to the end. And some pretty tough competition. You've got to shadow your partner. Go. Go on, Bonnie lad. The idea is you're trying to catch if we're out. For you and rugby could be a way into lots of positives. You can move left or right. It's a way of him getting some praise. It's a way of him feeling that he's been selected above others. OK, pass the ball on to you and good you and you start now. Jog forward pass. Good you and that's lovely. That there's a bit of investment in him. He's being rewarded for doing the right kind of things, remembering his kit, turning up on time, <laughs> listening to instructions. You're aiming to try and bash through the middle. They're not going to move apart. You're only little lads. You have to get through the middle, so they're not going to move away. All of those things are what you want him to do every day, but just in a different set of circumstances. Good. Good boy. So, has Ewan done enough to impress? All right, boys. Right, I'll stick this up, then we can have a look. Yeah. Drum roll. I'll go out your way. Two days later, and Mr Livesey has the news they've all been waiting for. Who has made the Year 7 rugby team? Right, there we go. Ewan's on the list, and he's made the team. Is that good news? Yeah. So you're really pleased about that? I'm really pleased you would. How's the day gone so far now we're back in lessons? Good. Good. Well, let's keep it like that. When I saw my name on the rugby board, 
Like, it was exciting cos I was in the rugby team. I was proud of myself. Positive, so I'm really pleased. Well done, Ewan. Let's keep going to practices. Ewan's not a naughty boy at heart. When I look at Ewan, I think he definitely cares. Um, I think Ewan himself expects to fail, and I think that's a problem in his head, that he, if he thinks he's going to fail, he will fail. I think if you can get Ewan to be on a positive where he's, he's going to succeed, he will succeed. He wants to do the right thing. I think he wants to do the right thing for himself. It's just a matter of him having the ability and the confidence to do the right thing. Let's hope Ewan can start again and make the most of secondary school. Everyone stand up, please, and salute the captain. Put the hat, no, everyone stand up and salute the captain. Your captain, salute the captain. Thank you very much. You also get because you are the captain. It, it's always good to have Ewan in the classroom. He has brought in an element of fun with him. Other students like to be around him, and he's very popular. So, when I say pointy finger, I want you to tell me what you think the book is about. Pointy finger! A kid and a pirate meet, and they're both looking for treasure, oh. and then they go on an adventure and then finally they find it. OK, excellent. Ewan is um, very sporty, and he's really helpful, because he helped me in my ICT when I was a bit behind. But he can be quite cheeky. Captain, don't be doodling in front of my book. All right. You'll get the black spot. I think Ewan's had a tough time because some of the teachers are quite strict and he's done quite nice stuff, like the stuff that he's done. He's like one of my favourite friends. Like a couple of days ago, I wasn't too keen on him. But now he's all right. <sighs> he's your best friend, eh? Yeah. Oh, you can never have more than one best friend. Even though Ewan has been trying his best, it's not always easy to keep out of trouble. And soon, he's walking out of school again. Do you realise if you don't come back in, there could be sanctions next week? Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario, what do you think could happen? You're not bothered? I don't think you... It's not last very long, do you? It can't use if it's the attitude. And I know it's better than that. I've seen better than that. What happened for you to walk out? Do you want? You're going to change your mind and do the right thing for everyone? Come on. Well, I'm going to have a wonder on there. I want you to have a little think, all right? Yeah? Anything? Did he say anything? No, he just wants to go on. So he wants to go on. Is that what he said? Yeah. I think he may go today. Mr. Livesey can only wait while Ewan decides what to do. This time, Ewan gets on the train. No, I just couldn't help it. Walking out and going home. Some adults do understand me and some don't understand me. I would love to sit here and say it's going to be plain sailing for the next sort of four and a half years and Ewan will leave Conyers School in, in four and a half years' time, done really well. Um, I'm sure he will do really well, but I would imagine that we're going to have a rocky ride, but when he makes a mistake, he's going to know that I'm there for him to try and get him back on the path to success straight away. Mr Livesey's like looking out for me so I don't get kicked out of the school. I like appreciate it. been a difficult time for Ewan. Good lad, and over to there. Yeah. Fabulous. So, so you just all nine. The fresh start he had hoped for went wrong almost from day one. Oh, yeah. Well done. But now he's more settled. He's getting stuck into lessons, and with the help of Mr Livesey and the other teachers, he's keeping out of trouble. How are we doing over there? All right. I think Ewan has had a change of heart. He's realised that he does want to be in this school and he wants to do the best, not for himself, but he wants to please mum and dad and make them proud of him. So I think that's helped change Ewan's ideas of what he wants to achieve at Conyers School. 
I used to be naughty, but I feel like proud of myself because like I've turned it around and I've done get frustrated as much as I used to. But it's done. So do you want do you want tomato on top? Well, you can do no. that when you do it at home. No, Miss, I don't like tomato. Oh, right, that's just Primary school was all right, but then when you come to secondary, it's a bit harder, like the work, and then like you just like get used to it. So I want to do well at school and try to be good. Beautiful. Well done. If someone in your like year seven next year went. Go to the train station, like I would tell him not to go because you're going more and more bother. Ewan seems to have a big smile on his face a lot more. I don't think he's going to be our model student and be a perfect angel. He's still going to be have a little that, that wild side to him and get himself into trouble now and again. But if I see that cheeky smile on Ewan and he's on board with me, I think that'll work great over the five years. Do you like that? No. Go and do your dishes. I don't like that. Because you can. At primary, Ewan was a champion swimmer, but gave it up when he started skipping class. Now, he's jumped back in the pool again. And he's fast becoming a rising star in the rugby field as well. Keep up the good work, buddy. I'm really excited, like, because I'm getting uh, stuck in. I've been feeling, like, welcome. That makes me feel, like, really happy. People want me here. Next time on Our School, we meet two students who are worried about fitting in. Lucas, who's come from a small village primary... They need half oxygen to make fire. Nerd. Well, everyone does call me a nerd. And Katie, who's worried about making friends. When you like feel lonely and you've got, uh, and you've got no friends, it feels like you're in a world all by yourself. Have you ever seen a zombie come to tea? And we see some of the more unusual classes that Year 7s try. <laughs> You can move left or right!